Hey guys, I'm Aaron, and today we're going to talk about getting started with a 3D mouse in SketchUp. So any of you who know me or have watched my videos for a while know that I use a 3D mouse. I use a Space Mouse Enterprise from 3D Connection. Uh, I'll link to it down in the notes down below. Um, and I'm a big advocate. I really believe that uh, as a professional designer, you get to a point where you plateau um, I think as a, a, a presenter, same thing. There's a spot where you've done everything you can. I think a 3D mouse is a way to kind of push yourself, take your, um, you know, your presentations to another level, uh, design quicker, design faster by adding hardware to your workflow. Uh, and the 3D mouse is the thing that's done that for me. I think that I do a lot of work quicker, better, and it looks better because of a 3D mouse. I wanted to do a video just kind of showing how to get going, get started, with a 3D mouse, if you get a 3D mouse, um, 3D Connection is the kind of the number one place to go get one. Um, once you get it, once you install it, you get the drivers, get all that stuff set up. There are like training apps and that kind of thing in there that will help you get used to it, uh, moving things around. Uh, mine's gonna be specific to SketchUp. This video right here is getting your 3D mouse legs under you inside of SketchUp. It's not a quick and easy thing. It does take a little bit of dedication, but I want to give you a few tips and show you a few things that uh, might speed up your uh, process of including a 3D mouse in your SketchUp workflow. So let's hop in and take a look. All right, so a little different from our, our normal view because I do have an overhead camera here. So I'm going to be showing my 3D mouse. So this is my Space Mouse Enterprise. This is the mouse that I use day to day. The things that we're going to look at are the same, whether you're using an enterprise, a pro or the little travel version that just does just the puck. Um, it's, it's going to all be the same. So I'm not even going to talk about all the stuff that around here. I have a bunch of shortcut buttons and that kind of stuff that's here. That's really nice. But really what we're going to talk about getting started is just this, just the puck. So we're going to talk about moving that around and how that works. So first things first, when you get a space mouse, you do have to install the driver. So in this case, I have installed the driver. The driver includes an extension that it auto installs inside of SketchUp. So if I come in here and I look at my, whoops, not that one, wrong extension button. I pull up my extension information right here. This top one, 3DX SketchUp from 3D Connection, that is the extension that allows the 3D mouse to control my model. So this, that's what gets installed. You don't have to do it installed from in here either. When you install the drivers that you get with your mouse or you download when you get your mouse, uh, it will install it automatically. So it'll automatically be in here. Now, when you first come in and you touch your mouse, something like this is probably going to happen. And then you start doing this and then, oh no, what happened? Oh no, oh no. Yeah, that happens. So when you start learning, this is me, one of your best friends right here. This icon right here is Zoom Extents. Zoom Extents is going to take you back so you can see everything. It's not necessarily going to put it in the right spot. I, I orbited underneath, so I need to fix that too. You can always default back to orbit, right? So I can take my regular mouse. Uh, it's off camera right here, but I can just use regular orbit to get back where I want. Another option would be to just go to camera and go to, you know, a front view every time you get lost. That works. That's a good way to do it. Um, I just point that out because myself and everybody I've ever seen first use a mouse, the first thing they do is they flip their model upside down and they shoot the camera off in the opposite direction. It happens. No big deal. So what I would recommend here, now when you get in here, like I said, this is going to take time. One of the things I tried to do was I got a model, get a model on your screen that's not just a face me component. Face me components are hard to move around because they always face you, thus the name. But get a, get a model in here that's easy to tell. Uh, don't have a big clunky model that staggers when you orbit it. Get something simple, snappy on your screen. And that way you can just practice moving around it in 3D space. It's basically what the, the emulators or the, the trainer that comes with the software does. Same thing. Um, so what you're going to want to practice doing is spinning the model around. So if I grab this puck, this is, it's hard to see because the, the movement is really not very much, but if I turn it like I'm turning a knob you can see it spins around the blue axis. If I push the top of my puck up, 
it rotates, I'm sorry, push the front of my puck down or the back up, it rotates underneath. If I pull it the opposite direction, it rotates this way. Same thing with left to right. And I can actually move it left to right, pan it by sliding like that. Um, I can zoom in or slide it up and down by moving the puck up and down. So I'm grabbing it and pulling it up, pushing it down, or I can push in or out by pushing on the puck. These axes are editable. So that's one of the, one of the things. So a couple things, we're just going to hit multiple points, rapid succession here. The first thing I would say, the way I learned to get efficient with this device is I grabbed a model and I actually on my mouse disabled the middle mouse button. So normally the middle mouse button, the scroll wheel right here controls zoom by scrolling it and then by holding it down, you go into orbit. I turned that off. I disabled my middle mouse button so it wouldn't work at all. So I was limited to moving my model with just the mouse and then using things like, you know, uh, zoom extends to get back to the point where I saw my model filling the screen. So that was what I did. I, I, I don't learn. Sometimes I need to be beaten a little bit to, to learn things. And that did it by not having that other mouse. I did get used to moving things around in 3d space pretty quickly by not having my scroll wheel. So that's one thing I would recommend. You don't have to do it. The other thing I would say is make sure you're not doing production work while you undertake learning this new device. So it is a great tool. It is, like I said, it's great for, you know, while I'm moving around with this mouse, I can use this mouse to go grab my next command. I can go drop down menus, that sort of thing, while always moving. The other thing that's nice is look how smooth this is all moving around the model. It's great for presentations. Check out your model. Here's what your house is going to look like. Let's do a fly through. Let's do a fly over. That is all. It just looks so much better than, than the standard moves in SketchUp but only if you practice. Don't grab a 3D mouse, go home and schedule a big important uh, walkthrough of your model with your customer tomorrow because you're not gonna be ready and you're gonna end up stuck inside or flipped upside down or something like that. But take time, work on a simple model, move it around just like you learned SketchUp. Don't expect to be have this on lock the first day you do it. It is gonna take some practice. All right. A couple other things I would recommend. So like I said, this is all customizable. Which, which axes move with which move of the, of the puck is customizable. Regardless of which mouse you have, there's gonna be a menu button on it. So on the little one, it's one of the, it's the side button you hit. When you hit that, it's gonna bring up the settings for the mouse. This is gonna look different on Windows and Mac, but the same information, the same options are in here once we dig. So what we're gonna look at is this navigation tab. There's a couple of things that are very important here. Um, the first one, the main one, is this right here, lock horizon. So one thing you notice is right now I'm configuring for SketchUp. So there is a universal set of settings and then there's also different settings for different programs. I'm just looking at SketchUp. What happens when I'm in SketchUp? Um, if you turn off lock horizon, watch what happens. Now when I start flipping around, this, this can happen. Um, this is not a great look for your model, especially if your model is a house. You know, you want, we generally want to keep those on the ground. So lock horizon is a great thing because it does keep the, the horizon horizontal and then I can't flip it um, sideways like this. I can still go underneath it. Uh, it just does so, so that I'm still parallel to the horizon. It doesn't do this seasickness inducing movements like that. So let's get back. Like I said before, if I get all, all screwy like this, go to camera, standard view, front view, and then I'll push the menu button again, pull that back up and keep lock horizon on. The other thing to think about is right here, motion model, object, fly, drone, camera, target camera. I have always, I tried all of these when I first started. Object made the most sense to me. Object says, you know, it's basically rotating around like you're holding the model in your hand which made the most sense to my brain as how I was modeling. So when I look at this thing on the screen, I think of this as a thing I'm working on. So if I want to turn it this way, I turn the puck this way. If I want to flip it back over like that, then I move the puck like that. And it made the most sense to my brain that this is how you do it. Now, you'll notice in here that if you want to do something like flying around, 
Oh, I just I made a I made a symbol there with my thumb. Um, if you want to turn on fly, it'll be you'll be controlling basically like the camera's gonna be flying around your model. So this is gonna be setting the direction of your camera as opposed to spinning that model around. Again, the because of the way we're doing this, I'm not flying through a landscape or anything like that. I'm actually working on that model. That object made the most sense to me. It doesn't mean it's going to be the same for you. So you might want to try something different. Go for it. Uh, the other one in here that I'm just going to mention, I'm not going to go through all these presets, but dominant. Dominant basically says if that turns on, then you only move in one axis at a time. So you move over, then up, as opposed to like moving multiple axes at the same time. So right now I can spin while I zoom in or move it down while I flip it over. So this is available because that dominant is not turned on. Once dominant is turned on, you're only going to move in one axis at a time. All right, the final thing I want to point out, just because I mentioned this a couple times already, is the customizability. Because I have buttons, I do have this buttons tab here, and I could, I could edit that. But the big thing is this axis. So with the axes, if I look right here, um, it shows me all the different ways that the puck can move. So that's what all these are. These are all the motions it can have. And then what's going to happen when I move them. So you may have already noticed, those of you who have really good eyesight and saw this little teeny text, that I have in and out flipped with down and up. See that? So when I move my mouse button in, it treats as if I'm moving down. And out is up. Down is out. Up is in. Perfectly clear, right? So basically what happened was, as I experimented and played with it, I found that the axes that I wanted to move were different from the defaults. I went in and swapped them out, and now my brain, the connection's almost instant. I wanna move my model, I move the puck, there's not any thought that has to happen. So this is a big spot I would pay attention. If you have a 3D mouse with buttons, yeah, think about what commands you use a lot and what you wanna put on here. That's important, That's that's great. But the axis is super, super important. You have to have this working the way you're expecting it. Otherwise, your model's not going to move the way you want to. So there you go. I would say if you're implementing a 3D mouse for the first time, I would say give yourself a good week between starting and being efficient. Once you get used to it, though, I mean, there's some great advantages of the 3D mouse. Not only do I have smooth moves here, I can pop my head inside a model just by sliding the camera in, slide the camera back out, move in 3D space. It is just such a great way to move. It really speeds up my design and makes my presentations look pretty darn good if I do say so myself. So check it out and like I said, give yourself some time, some space, and uh, yeah, it's gonna be something I think you'll be appreciative of once you get used to it. So that's just my take on it. Uh, there's. Other people who will say probably do it a different way, and that's cool. Use the 3D connection training tools. That's awesome, too. Go for it. Use that stuff also. These were just tips that I came up with. I know I talk about using 3D mouse a lot on our live streams and that sort of thing. Uh, people ask all the time in your video, how do you make your model move so smooth? That's how. And these tips that I gave were things I wish I had known at the beginning. They would have sped up my process of getting used to using a 3D mouse. So um, like I said, I will link to the 3D connection site down below. Specifically, I'll link to my mouse uh, so you guys can just see what it is, see how it works. Um, but uh, yeah, that's it for now. So if you like that video, click like down below. And if you haven't already, please do subscribe. We create several videos each and every week and you'll be notified of all of them if you subscribe. Most importantly, though, leave us a comment down below. Do you use a 3D mouse? Do you have questions about a 3D mouse? Are you opposed to 3D mice? Or do you think there's a topic, a thing in SketchUp that you would love to see us make a video on, but we haven't yet? Leave that down in the comments. We like making these videos a lot. We like them even more when they're showing something you want to see. Thank you.